Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, that should be our heart's desire. Put your hands to bless the name of the Lord. He is great. And great to be praised. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Come on, Brother Charlie. Amen. I'm going to try to keep this short because I want to hear the message. Uh, when the Lord speaks to me, tells me to get up front, I do. When he wants me to stop, I do. I try my best to stop. But I love to hear the message of God because that's what it's all about. That's what each and every one of us has heard the message. That's what makes us strong. Amen. We need the message of God. Yes. We not only need yes. to hear it, we need to be a doer of the word because yes. if we're a doer, we're blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. So I thank God everything step by step today. I appreciate my pastor and his congregation more you ever know. Amen. It's so good to see my daughter, Christy. Amen. We all go way back with the Dexter and the whole family. I tell you, I think about when I first got saved in 74. If I wouldn't have got saved when I did, listen to the Lord, none of this would have happened. So see, things happen for a purpose. God sees yes. down the road. He goes ahead of us. Yes. Yes. I would not have tossed, you know, I wouldn't have little Kingsley. I love him so much. This matters so much to me today. Pastor James dedicated to God. Amen. My daughter's here. And if I wouldn't have met my wife, none of this would have happened. Thank Amen. God if we follow God, yes. He Amen. will lead us. Yes. I've known Amen. people that were pillars, just about ready to God to bless them. I mean, I could see it happen. They give up facts and left God. Amen. And chaos was in their life. Yes. So I love God so much. Yes. Amen. Thank God we can be here today. Most of all, thank God for his presence. Yes. So amen. saints, be ready to give up. Keep going because amen. right around the corner, the old song, tomorrow is another day. Amen. And sometimes the night can look gloomy. Right. I've been there before. Right. It's like there's no hope. But the next day, God's there. Hallelujah. Yes. Glad that I hung on. I would never have all this. My family. Yes. Thank God for the spiritual family. Yes. Most of all, thank God for His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. And I accepted in 1974 of May yes. that I wouldn't be here today, each step. So we need to hang on. God's got something in His ear for us. Matter Amen. of fact, 2017 is God's perfection. Yes. Perfection Amen. number seven is a perfection number yes. in the Bible. Amen. It's completeness. Yes. So thank God. This has been a good year. Hallelujah. And I think God's got a lot for the church yet. Yes. Thank God it's growing. Thank God for our pastor who preaches the word without fear and faith. Praise God. Thank the Lord. God's good. All the time. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Can anybody testify that the Lord has been better to them this week than anybody else? Amen. 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 If you're alive, you should raise your hand. Praise God. God's been good to you another week. Praise God. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes. Praise God. We started a few weeks ago, before we went on vacation, we started this series of lessons on pleasing God. And we, um, if you want freedom in your life, you, want, um, you can have freedom if you'll just please God and stop pleasing others. Amen? Amen. 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 Because when you please others, man, you can have you can be on a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Anybody try to please somebody, yeah. and you just spend, you know, then you do this, and then they're like, "Oh, that's not what I really wanted," or "That's not, not what I meant," you know. And, and so you're just completely on a roller coaster ride from one thing to another. And then if you're pleasing people, man, there's a uh, could be a thousand people in your life, so you're trying to do everything for everyone to make them be happy, and that's not going to work out. But if you'll please God, folks, I want to tell you, you'll please others. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. So um, this morning I want to encourage you to be a God pleaser. Look at somebody and say, I want to be a God pleaser. Amen? A God pleaser. Today I would like to start with the question, how many in our audience today want to please God? Amen. Amen? amen. Yep, I want to please God. Yeah, it's okay to raise your hand. Yep, I want to please God. Our scripture text gives us insight that faith is our connection to pleasing God. So if you were, were one that said, I want to please God, then you have to have faith. Amen? Amen. Because if you go back to Hebrews uh, 6, uh, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse, it said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? Amen. Isn't that what it says? Amen. 
I'm not making this up. I'm not pulling it out of my hat. I don't have rabbits here today to pull out of my hat. I'm not a magician. magician. I cannot do that. But I want to tell you, there's something that we can stand on that is faithful and true, and that is God's word. And so if you're going to a, a, a church, you should hear the word of God, not what the pastor has to say, but what the word of God has to say. If his message is not based on the word of God, then you might want to turn and run. Amen? Did you hear what I said there? If I'm preaching something not based on the word of God, then you might want to turn and run because the word of God is what makes us stable. And I want to let you know that in this day and time, in the church in which we live, in the world in which we live, there are people that are standing in pulpits week in and week out and don't preach from the Word of God. But I want to tell you, if you want to have strength in your life, then go to the Word of God and hear somebody that is preaching from the Word of God. Amen. And so this morning it says it's impossible for us to please God if we don't have faith. It's not what I'm saying, but it's what the Word of God says here in Hebrews 11th chapter. Tell me what is our key to pleasing God. What is our key to pleasing God? What did it say? Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about today. It said it. No trick question. You might have thought I was trying to trick you, but I wasn't trying to trick you. Faith is our key to pleasing God because it said without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means you can't do it without faith. Amen. If you do not have faith in your life, you can't do it. So if faith is our key to pleasing God, then what is faith? Let's go back to the top of the passage and discover from the word what faith is. What did I say we were going to discover what faith is? Okay, yeah, I wanted you guys to see if anybody was paying attention from the word. Folks, everything that, you need, that you're being taught on how to live as a Christian should be come from the Word of God. Amen? Because the Word of God is our strength. Amen? Look at somebody say, the Word of God, word of God. is my strength. my strength. It will keep me, will keep me. in good times, good times and in also bad times. Amen? Yeah. Yes, it will keep me. Because I want to tell you, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to always have an easy time. Amen? Because the Word declares that it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen? So just as people that are without God have trouble times, the, the same thing is for people that are in God, they have trouble times. But the good news is that if you're in God, you have somebody that when you're weak, he is strong. Oh, I had some people that know the word of God that keeps us strong in our weak times. Amen? And he gives us, and this is the word of God, what it says in the book of Romans, it says that even in our time of weakness, that is the time when the power of God rests upon us. Amen? Isn't it good to know that in our hard times that the power of God is resting upon us? And people that are without Jesus don't have the power of God resting upon them. They have things that happen in their life because of faith and because of Christ. But I want to tell you that there are, we know without a shadow of a doubt, we can walk in confidence that the power of God is resting upon us in our troubled times because we have faith in Jesus. Amen. How many people are glad that they have faith in Jesus? Amen. Let's go to verse 1 in chapter 11 and see what faith is. Now faith is being sure of what's hoped for and certain of what we do not see. In the new translation of the NIV it says, Now faith is the confidence of things hoped for, the assurance of things not seen. And so today, what is faith? Faith is confidence. Faith is confidence. Look at somebody say, faith is, faith is confidence. confidence. Webster says, confidence means this, the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. Certain about the truth of something. This morning in my Sunday school class, I brought donuts. I want to ask my Sunday school class if those donuts were good. They were for, from uh, Donuts to Go. I just want to see if they were paying attention. They get on me because I was called Donuts to Go because Donut World was once called Donuts to Go. People don't know that. And then also, I also call it Dirty Donuts. And so that's, that was by uh, Miss Jenny. And sometimes they don't always pass the health inspection that their donuts are still good. Amen. It's <laughs> 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 still good. 
<laughs> if, you're, if you're the owner of Donuts to Death, uh, uh, go to work, don't take this person. <laughs> when I go there and buy a lot of donuts. <laughs> you bought it this morning, not for our sense of class. But I have a question for you guys. Was the donut good? Okay? Are you certain that the donuts are good? Are you certain that the donuts are good? Yes. Hey guys, are you? Yes. All right, are you here? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're really shaking their head. They're real shy. Mm -hmm. They were shaking their head, yes. How are you guys certain that the donuts are good? We're good this morning. I'm doing it. Huh? The cream was great, but how are you uh, sure that the cream was great? You tasted it. They tasted it. So they had a certainty that the donuts were good because they tasted it. They were connected to the donuts. Amen? Their mouths had a bite on those donuts. And some of them were licking the donut, the, the cream, because it was dripping down out of their donuts, and they were licking it so it wouldn't fall on their, to their laps. So they were connected to that. So they were certain that those donuts were good. There was nothing wrong with those donuts because they had tasted it. Folks, I want to tell you, we can be certain that God is who he said he is because we have to be connected to it through our faith. Right? We can be confident of it. Amen? So faith is confident. How do we have confidence? By being what? Connected to God. Amen? See, folks, I can't be connected. I can't be confident that God is who he said he is if I'm not connected to God. Amen? Amen. I can't. See, if, I, if I'm not connected to my brother Greg, I can't say that he's a trustworthy person. He's a person of integrity. He, <coughs> he's good at finances. I can't say those things. But because I'm connected to Minister Greg or my brother Greg, then I can say all those things about him. Why? Because of my connectedness. And I can say it not with just a little shadiness. Well, I'm not really sure. You know. If you're new here today, like this brother over here, I can't really say all those things that I just said about Minister Greg. It might be true in his life, but I can't say that. Why? Because I'm not connected, right? I can't say with confidence. I can say maybe he might know a little bit about money. I don't really don't know. He might be just broke as a joke. I don't know. But he, I can say it. But I cannot say it with confidence because I'm not connected. Folks, if we're going to have faith in God, and we're going to be able to speak in confidence, because faith is confidence, come on now, you hear what I'm saying? Faith is confidence, then we're going to have to be what? Connected to the source. We're going to have to be connected to him. What am I talking about connected? I'm talking about being in relationship with him. Because I have a relationship with Minister Greg, I can say those things with confidence about him. Because I have a relationship with my wife, I can say that she's a beautiful um, lady, that um, she loves me even when I'm crazy. She loves, um, she takes care of me. She, um, she thinks that I'm her mocha. But she, uh, all those things, I can say all those things about her because we are in relationship with her. Amen? But if I was not in a relationship, I might say, well, I think. But if I'm in a relationship, then I can have faith and confidence that what I said is true. Yeah. Amen. See, I gave away some of our secrets. No, they're not secrets. She'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, I like that. <laughs> Say that out <laughs> Amen. No. But faith is confidence, certainty. <laughs> so, Without faith or without confidence, it's impossible to please God. Let me just put that, um, that definition in this passage of Scripture this morning. Now, the state of feeling certain about the truth of something we hope for and certain an assurance of what we do not see. We have a certainty about how many of you have people have a certainty about Jesus Christ? Amen. About God the Father? Amen. Why? Because you have what? First of all, let's say what? Right. And you have faith. Yeah. And faith in God, which means confidence. What is faith? Faith is confidence. It doesn't mean that sometimes we don't have doubt. See? When we have faith, sometimes we have doubt. Amen? Amen. 
See, see, folks, I want to tell you that people will sometimes set it up with set up Christians with toxic faith. Toxic faith means faith that is tainted, faith that has a disease or trouble. But I want to let you know that even in your faith, sometimes your faith, in your faith, you have doubt. But if you have faith with that, with confidence and uncertainty, then the faith overtakes the doubt. And even though I don't always see what God is doing, I know that God is a what? Working all things for my good to them that love God. I know that something out of this situation is going to be good. I might not see it now, but I know because of my faith in Jesus Christ that it's going to happen to be good in my life or bring good in my life because God is who he said he is. And I can say that with confidence and assurance because I have faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is not true? Doesn't mean I don't doubt sometimes. Folks, I want to tell you the deepest, the strongest Christian, which my mother, I would say, is one of the strong Christians in my life. But there was a time that you doubted God when you went through the loss of your husband. Is that not true? But what took you through? What had you sitting here in the house of the Lord today? Your faith in God. Amen? And still, sometimes it's not easy. Still, sometimes, Sister Betty, doubt creeps up, doesn't it? But this is an assurance that you know that God is with you. And if God is with you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's always got your back. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what takes you through Amen. and brings you confidence. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to tell you, this Christian walk doesn't always mean like it's going to be a cake walk, a pineapple upside down cake. Sometimes you're going to have those liver and onions. I'm sorry, if you like living at the liver and on the inside, I don't. So that's the reason why I said it. Sometimes it's just going to be like that liver and onions experience. I smell up just kind of turns my stomach. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes. I know some of you guys love it. I'm sorry if that's your favorite dish. But for me, it's going to be like that liver and onions experience. But it doesn't mean that God has left you or God has forsaken you. And the reason why we know that is because of our what? confidence in Him. Which is our faith. faith. Right? Amen. Isn't that good stuff? Yeah. Yes. That's good. Amen. What else is faith? If you go back up to that verse that we read this morning, it said faith is assurance. Webster says assurance means this a positive declaration. What is a de declaration? A statement. Something that we would, what? Speak. Amen? Something that declares, something that we would speak, something that we know. Amen? And so, uh, Webster says assurance means a positive declaration intended to give confidence, a promise. Amen? How many people know that God is full of promises? Amen? 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 Amen. I forget how many promises are in the Word of God, but God's, uh, this book, the Bible, is full of Top full of a whole lot of promises. And how do we know that they're true? Because we are what? Connected to him, which gives us confidence. But then also we know that the promises are true because they have been tested and proven in our life, which gives us an assurance that God is who he said he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Without a shadow of doubt, I know that God is who he said he is. Because let me tell you a few things in my life. This is what has happened. When I was a baby, I was overcome with carbon dioxide fumes. Many of you know that. Sister Betty was there um, during that situation. My mom was there. I was the baby that was there that was closest to the carbon dioxide fumes. And they said, if I was going to live, then I was going to be a vegetable for the rest of my life. That means that I was going to just be existing, breathing air, but my brain would be dead. I would just be laying there dead. There was no way that I was going to do any uh, function or have anything um, life-like things in my life um, other than just being in existence. And so this is what the Lord did. I want to tell you, my father, this is what the story, I, was, I can't remember all this, but the, my, they tell me the story that my father walked me around the house. And uh, uh, that's not true. Tell, tell the story. Yes. They put me on oxygen at the hospital. Oh, he walked the other children around. They put me on oxygen because they thought there is no way that I was going to be sustained. I would just be a vegetable. But I want to tell you, the Lord has been gracious to me. Hallelujah. Did
Do you hear what I said? I didn't say this was something that James has done. I want to tell you this is that, that the Lord has been gracious to me. Out of eight children, it was a struggle, I want to tell you. And it's not easy. And sometimes I think about going back to college. But I, just, I say, oh, the work is too much. I don't think I want to do it. And I went back just a few uh, months ago, and it was a whole lot of work. And so I say, I'm going to go back and get my master's degree. But I don't know if I can do that. But I want to tell you, out of eight children, the Lord was gracious to me when I should have been brain dead, that he allowed me to be one out of the eight to finish college for the be the very first one. That's what God can do. And so I can say with assurance, when God says he can heal your body, hallelujah, he can heal your body with assurance. I have faith in my God that what he said he would do, he's going to do. Hallelujah. Assurance. Faith is assurance. I was an infant. Yes. Amen. And this is another thing I'll tell you. By the grace of God. Really, I went back my last year as a senior. Not because I had to, because I was done with school a year early. Because of God's grace. But I went back to help teach in the Christian school where I was with younger kids. Because I knew that the Lord was calling me to be a teacher. That was God's grace. When I should have been brain dead. God sustained my mental capacity. It's all because of God. You might say you're brain dead. I know that. <laughs> really, I'm not. Because in my mother's womb, God had a purpose and a call for my life. And God knew that I needed to be here at these very moments. So he sustained me and able to say, in faith, I have assurance that God is who he is. Amen. Folks, more than that. We were broke down. When my wife and I first got together, she didn't marry me because I had a whole lot of money. And I still don't today. <laughs> she did. And this is what she, and I will tell you this. I told her when we first started dating, I said this. I'm not messing around. I'm, I'm 37 years old. Yeah, was that 37? I don't know. Yeah, 37. Yes. I was 37 years old, and I said, I'm not messing around. If you're not serious about um, getting married to me, then we're not dating. <laughs> is that what I said to you? I said that. I was too old to be going through this whole dating scene. <laughs> so, if you're, so if you're in your 30s, you're too old to go through our whole dating scene. Give it up. Tell them if they're not willing to marry you, you're looking to pass away. God's bringing somebody in your life. Amen. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> God might be to go through the process. And so I said those um, words to her, but we were pretty broken. Um, one of the things, the car that I had, the kids loved it, but I want to tell you that car filled up with water. I bought it for $800. I had my convertible. I wanted it all my life. I had my convertible. It was a Cabriolet. I think it was, a, I don't even know. It wasn't the same years as yours, Michelle. I don't think it was. What's your year from yours? Oh, no, mine's older than hers. I think mine was an 88 or something. 88 um, with a, a roof full of holes. And so... That's what I brought into the relationship. I remember our second date, we went to um, uh, the fair. And on our second date to the fair, we thought we were living it up. I don't know, I thought we were living up. We had our house, <laughs> we had the roof down, and we were on our way running up the 70 to go to the high state fair. And I kept going in the breeze. We were in love, though. I told her, I told her this is what she's getting. <laughs> so. But it came down to came down to, I did have hair back then, so my hair wasn't going to place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hear me. Stop hearing me. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> so we uh, then uh, went through a, a, a hard time with our cars and kept just, our car just kept breaking down. We did have a green church van. And my son Isaiah loved it when I picked him up from school in the green church van. Really, he would say, Dad, don't pick me up only if you're going to wait two or three blocks away and then I'll come and get the church back. <laughs> yeah. It was not the best looking van, but God did provide that for us because we would have been without any transportation at all if we could not use a church van at that time. So God provided it. But we had Jenny's wife van and I had sold the, um, my convertible to Tom and Mandy. I thought they'd think they had it for a while, but then they sold it. And so... Um, we were just like, we don't know what we're going to do. Her car's breaking down. My, I didn't have a car. What are we going to do? We have kids. We, we need something to transport, get around 
to our jobs each day. And then never forget, it was such a difficult time. You've heard this testimony before, most of you. But it was such a difficult time in our Christians' experience. And there was times when I would question, I'd say, God, it's, am I really called to be the preacher here at Good Shepherd Church? There was times when I said that. Just because I'm the preacher don't mean I don't go through hard times. That's right. That's right. Just as you go through hard times and ask God why and how and all that, so do I. Because my faith is just growing like your faith is growing. And so during that time, I'll never forget, I was laying in there. I think it might have just came off a of fast not too long from that time. But then um, somebody came knocking at the door, and it was the postman. And I'm like, why in the world are we getting certified letters? That, does that mean we have a bill that's we owe and we can't pay it? And so somebody sent a certified letter to make sure that we get the information. <laughs> and he said to my wife, she went to the door, and she, I was laying in on the bed, and she said, um, you have to come sign for this. And I opened up the envelope, and inside was another envelope. And inside that envelope was a cashier's check for $20,000. It said, it said in that envelope, it said, buy a car, a new car for your family, whatever you want. And we were able to go buy a new car for our family, which that's what DJ drives right now. And also pay some things off that we need to pay off because that's what God does. I want to tell you, I can say with faith in Christ, with assurance, because faith is assurance, that God said he would be a provider for you and God will provide for me. It doesn't always come in dollars and cents. It doesn't always come in the form of a car. It doesn't always come in the form of your uh, a brand new house. It might not always come the way you think it's going to come. But I want to tell you, God said he will be a provider. And through faith with assurance, I can tell you he is a provider. And God always provides, no matter what the circumstance. Sometimes you have to wait for a long time. Sometimes it might come tomorrow. But folks, I want to tell you, with assurance, because of my faith in Jesus, I can tell you, he is a provider. He is a provider. He is a provider. Faith is assurance. Assurance. I can declare with certainty that God is who he said he is. Does anybody else in here know that through faith, with assurance, that they can declare who God's, God's promises are yea and amen? Amen? God's promises are yea and amen. He will do what he said he will do. Faith is assurance. Faith is believing God's promises, even if you can't physically see God. God's promises. Amen? Isn't it, that, isn't it that way sometimes? Physically, you can't see it. You're like, oh, God, are you working this out? But you know without a shadow of a doubt, God's working it out. Amen? How many people can say that today? I know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going through some hard times, but I know without a shadow of a doubt, God's working it out. Amen? I want to tell you, Sister, Sister uh, Fred, this morning, Sister Fred came up to me and told me about her illness. I knew that she was um, ill and sick, and, but I didn't know to the extent. She told me that in one eye she's blind. But this is the whole thing. She might never see in that one eye. I know God can heal you and do it. I can tell you that. I can declare that for you, that God can heal that eye and you can see. But I want to tell you that if she does not see, God has provided people in her life that can help her to make it through. And one of those people is her husband. And bless me to God, she might not have got the husband that she needed. At this time, point in time in her life, if she didn't have confidence and faith in God, God can do it. God does it. And so she can say with assurance, God is working it out in her life. That's it. See, folks, I want to tell you, it doesn't mean that because you have cancer, you're going to be cancer free. That's toxic faith. Doesn't mean that. But God can do it. Amen? How many people know God can do it? He did it for my dad. But then the second time, he didn't do it. Does that mean that God didn't love him? No. That, does that mean that my dad sinned? No. That doesn't mean all those things. But it meant that God was working it out for his glory. And I want to tell you, out of it, God has moved our church into rounds where God wants us to be at this point in time. Amen. That's God. And we can say that with assurance when we have faith in him. Because faith is assurance. Amen. Faith is assurance. Let's read out Romans 10, 17. He's going to bring it up for us. This allows us to say that assurance is what? What is assurance? Faith. Amen. 
met, which makes it possible for me to please God. There are some other places in the scripture that we can learn about faith that can give us a better picture of what faith is. So let's turn to Romans 10, um, 17 and read it. <coughs> it says this, Consequently, faith comes from what? Hearing. Hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about who? Christ. About Pastor James, was it? <laughs> about Bishop of Church, what? That was the message of Christ. So how do we have faith? What is faith? Faith is the message. Faith is the what? The word of God. And that's this is the message about Christ, is it not? This is a message about Christ. If you want to have faith, if you want your faith to be grow in Christ, if you want to be strong in the Lord, then get in the B-I-B-L-E, which is the basic instruction before leaving earth. The word of God will give you strength. Amen? The word of God will lift you up. Because I want to tell you, the other night, I was so sound asleep, I'd worked 12 and a half hours, and my mom called me, and she tried, and she was crying on the phone on my, uh, on my voicemail, but she did not get me, did you? She did not get me. I want to tell you, she did not get me. I was sound asleep. I did not even hear my phone. That's how tired I was. I want to tell you, I can sleep that sound sometimes. My wife will be uh, said, I say all kinds of stuff. I don't even know I said it. She'll say, you, you were so mad at me. I was trying to kiss you. I, I'm like, I didn't know. I, I was sound asleep. That's, a, that's how sound asleep I can be. But this is the truth of God's word. If, when my mom could not reach me, she could always reach God. Amen? She can stand on the word of God that if she prayed and asked God, all she does have to say the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, healing can come. Amen? Demons can flee. Amen? At the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's good that we can have other people that will um, pray for us and strengthen us, but we can pray for ourselves and be strengthened because it says it in the word of God. Amen? It says every believer can approach the throne of grace. What? Weekly. With a little bit of power. How can we approach the throne? Daily, but also we can approach the throne what? Boldly. Amen? Look at somebody and say, I can approach God's throne through prayer boldly. Amen. Do you believe it? You can do it. You don't have to wait for the pastor to do it. I'm not special, folks. I'm just, I just have this title. I'm called of God. But so are you called of God. God has an anointing on your life. And if church, sometimes churches want to make you feel weak, but folks, I want to tell you, I want to make you feel strong. Because I want to tell you that you are a believer. God has called you. God has anointed you. God has ordained you. And you can approach the throne of God's grace boldly. Amen. And you can learn this through the message of Christ. You can learn it. Folks, the word of God says this. I am more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. Doesn't it say that? It says nothing can separate you from the love of God. But some people want to tell you that if you do this wrong or you do that wrong, God doesn't love you anymore. I want to tell you, no matter what you do, God always loves you. Did you hear what I said this morning? No matter what you do, God always loves you. He doesn't like the sin, but he, doesn't, he always loves the sinner. Amen? Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? But our faith in God makes us believe that. Because if we hear the message, if we go to the message, which is the word of God, then we can have faith in God. Amen. So what is faith? Faith is God's word. Amen. What has God said through his word to you? I want, can I just share something that's so sad? Most people don't even spend five minutes in God's word a week. Not even five minutes. But we want to have strong faith. And I want to tell you, this says faith comes by hearing hearing the word of God. Some people don't even go to, go to church for months upon months. So how do they hear? They hear through their preacher, amen, if he's preaching out God's word. That's the reason why it says forsake not the assembling of yourself together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Because God knows that through his word we get strength. How many people want to be strong in the Lord? How many people want to be God pleasers? I'm saying not, this not just to you, I'm saying it to myself. Get in the Word. <clears throat> could, could things in life go a whole lot better if we would just get in the Word? 
Will we have a different perspective when we just get in the Word? Will we? How often are you in the Word? Our faith is a reflection. Our walk is a reflection of how much time we are in God's Word. How much time are we in God's Word? The Word of God is my strength, so I will what? Hear with my ears. Hold it in my heart that I will not do not what now? Sin against God. But Pastor, I can help not sin against God. I will tell you, you can help it if you'll get in God's word and walk in faith. I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes, you're not going to fail all the time, but I'm going to tell you, you can do less of it if you'll go to God's word. But folks, we have a hard time getting in God's word. I don't know why I'm staying here, because I just had a little bit of stuff underneath there. But folks, I want to tell you, God's word is our strength. And can I just tell you a story? This week... My wife doesn't even know, but this week has been somewhat of a hard week for me and my faith. When I went on vacation, really, to be honest, I was thinking about saying um, to her, what do you think about me not um, preaching anymore? Can I be real honest? But this is not about me, this is about God. Sometimes I get that. But this is the thing that I want to tell you. I turn around in my back seat as my wife drives me, and I look back, and there sits, sits Nadia. Oh God, forgive us. As Lydia wants to hear that song probably about five or six times a day. And there sits Nadia, my three year old, doing her own interpretation, a dance to that in the back seat. And God says, Sometimes it's not easy for you, but it's not always about you. It's about those who are following you. And then he says, James, would your faith be so weak if you get in the work? See, I just want to tell you, when it, when it gets to harvest, that's when God, I say, there's always people getting ready to come into the kingdom. When it gets to harvest, there's always people getting ready to come into the kingdom that are following your example. Don't give up on the Lord, because God's not giving up on you. See, folks, I'm, I'm willing to be real, because I realize that I'm a real person having real issues, but I serve a real God. Unless I admit it and bring it to the light, it will stay in the darkness, and the darkness does what? Kills the light. Amen? Don't act like I'm the only person that ever gets there. Who else gets there? Amen. 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 But God, because I have faith in God, I can walk in confidence, I can have assurance, and also I can know that his word is true. And I can go to his word for strength, because the word of God is my strength. Amen? Amen. The word of God is my strength. The word of God helps me stand firm. What, what, made it, what made them stand firm? Because of their what? Faith. Their faith in Jesus. Not their faith in themselves, but their faith in Jesus. This is my last scripture. Out of Luke 17, 6. Luke 17, 6. Can we hear any just kind of message and have faith? No, we've got to have the message of Christ. Amen. The message of the Word of God. This is Luke 17, 6. And it said this. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, what did it say there? Read it with me. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the small berry tree, be uprooted and planted in the seed, and it will obey. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? What is this teaching us about faith? Faith can be what? Faith can be small. Amen? Faith can be small. How many of you have been seen a mustard seed? Anybody seen a mustard seed before? Is a mustard seed as big as a watermelon seed? 
Nope. It's very small, isn't it? It's real tiny. You can lose it very easily. One new Sunday, several years ago, Sister Julie gave a lesson from this passage of scripture. As her illustration, she gave us a mustard seed on a card. Anybody remember that? I carried that in my Bible for a long time. Why didn't she just hand it to us in our hands? I would have lost it. I would have never even took it out of there. I could have put it in my Bible and it probably would have fell out and I would have never ever noticed it. A mustard seed is very small. The reason why is because it was so small, if she would have given it to us, the way I would, the way, that way, I would venture to say most of us would have lost it. So why did the Spirit have the right to compare faith to, the, to a mustard seed? Listen to this. Because often we are walking in faith, when we are walking in faith, because often when we are walking in faith, we can pair our faith to others' faith. Amen? Anybody? Come on. Get honest. I look at Pastor James and say, wow, he has great faith. See, if I want to be honest with you, you could look at me and say, man, he has great faith. This stuff happens. That stuff happens. He prays over people. They get healed. That, And you can say, I have great faith. And so you compare my faith to your faith. Anybody ever do that? I do that. Yes. Amen. Yes. We compare faith to one another. And in our eyes, their faith looks enormous or gigantic. Causing us to think that God must be doing good things in our life because of their faith. Amen? Anybody ever think that? Amen. Because of their faith, God has to be doing all these good things. But listen to this. The Lord wants us to know that it's not how big our faith is that matters. Did you hear what I said there? The Lord wants us to know. Look at somebody say, the Lord wants us to know. No matter how big our faith is, it is that this is what matters, but, but who our faith is in that matters. Did you get that? That was my big kind of jumbled up. Let me just say it again in this way. The Lord wants us to know that it doesn't matter how much, how big our faith is or how small our faith is, it doesn't matter what that is. It matters who our faith is in. And if you have faith in Jesus that says when the doors are closed, God can open them. It says that it might not be possible with men, but it is impossible with God. And so if you have faith in God, even though it might be small, God can bring it all to pass. Amen. That's what God can do. Because it's not because of what who I am, it's because of who he is. Come on, isn't that true? Come on. If you think that um, things are happening in your life because of who you are, you're all, you got it all mixed up. Things are happening in your life because of who he is, what he's doing. Because if it was about me, folks, I could boast of myself, isn't that? But God says, don't boast in yourself because it's not of your works that you should boast. But it's because, but it's because of what he's done. That we point all glory and honor to the Lord. Amen? Faith is. Faith is confidence. Faith is assurance. Faith is hearing the message of Christ. And then faith can be small. Come on. See? Maybe I just need to pray. No, maybe you don't need to pray a little bit harder. Maybe you just need to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. For he will what? Strengthen your heart. Isn't that? <laughs> See, folks, I want to tell you this walk with Christ is not about me. It's about all about him. God has given me talents and abilities. He doesn't always just want me to sit there and not do anything. But folks, I want to tell you, he has, he has given me those talents and abilities with confidence because of who he is, not because of who I am. So faith can be small. But we have to have what? Faith. If we're going to please who? If we're going to please God, what do we have to have? What do we have to have? Faith. How many people want to please God? Yeah. Amen. Then we got to have faith. We got to have confidence, assurance, and hear the message of Christ. And then also know, realize that our faith can be small. Because it don't matter what size our faith is, it matters who we're trusting yeah. to work it out. 
and then we need to trust God. So the challenge today is this. Live to please God by walking in what? Live to please God by walking in what? Faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Do you have confidence in God? Do you have assurance in God? Have you heard the message of Christ? Do you realize that it's not your faith that's at work? It's his faith that's making the difference. Because we can do nothing without Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Do you have faith in Jesus? Let's stand together. Do you have faith in Jesus? If today you don't have faith in Jesus, I would encourage you to come and get faith in Jesus. Because he'll give you assurance, he'll give you confidence. You'll have something to stand on. You'll know that he's faithful. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Faith. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We want to be God pleasers. Because men pleasers can cause us to be on the merry ground. But being God pleaser can cause us to walk on the right path and bring joy, peace, gentleness, patience, goodness, meekness, all those fruits of the Spirit to the forefront of our lives. To the forefront of our lives. Anybody want to come and pray as we close out today? Anyone at all? As we stay together. As we close in prayer.